What's up everybody? This video is about three ball cascade drills that I think are useful for every skill level. The drills are designed to find and test the limits of your three ball cascade, both in technical ways and later on in the video in some creative ways. The first drills are derived from thinking about dwell time and throw height. What I mean by dwell time is how long from when you make the catch until you make the throw, and throw height being how high the throw goes. So we can break this up into four different drills. We can have high dwell time and high throws. So trying to make the throws as high as you can while trying to keep the ball in, in your hand for as long as you can before the next throw. I can't throw them very high in this current ceiling, but this actually extends all the way up as high as you can throw them. I actually think this is a really useful thing for technical jugglers to really test the limits of how high you can throw things combined with how long you can keep them in your hand, so the high dwell time. So the next one would be high dwell time with low throws. So this is trying to lower the throws as much as you can while still trying to maximize the dwell time. We can now do a low dwell time with high throws. So this is trying to throw them immediately or as soon as you can after you catch it um, and still trying to make the throws as high as you can. Depending on your skill level and the ceiling height you have, you'll, you'll pick a different height to throw. So if you're a beginner and your three ball cascade is here, and that's what's comfortable for you, you can use the drill by just uh, throwing a little bit higher. The last drill would be low dwell time with low throws. So this is just as, as small and fast as you can make it. A note on, on dwell time, something to think about a way to to use the dwell time in a productive way is by relaxing your arm. So when I, I mean a, a normal comfortable three ball cascade for me has a lot of dwell time and a lot of just arm swing. So that actually is another drill that you can practice that I actually really recommend especially for lower skill levels is to juggle and drop your arms as much as you can, really emphasizing uh, pulling them back. I mean, you can exaggerate as much as you want, but the the key point is getting them to a fully relaxed state. I think for most people that's arm all the way down, shoulder loose. Um, you can even shake your arms to get the blood flow to really feel what that relaxed state is. So again, the, the drills so far are mixing dwell time with throw height, and you can combine them in any way. And then off of high dwell time, we have this other drill of relaxing and swinging your arms. All of the drills thus far have focused on kind of a pure form technique. But we can also think about three ball from a more creative side, where instead of thinking so much about the throws and the catches, we think about the shape of the pattern. So if here is your normal cascade, we can make it wider. We can make it narrower. And don't think because I call them creative that it's not useful for technical jugglers. As a technical juggler, you want to be able to catch wherever you need to in order to pull in a bad throw and get back to normal. So we can get wider and skinnier. We can think about just moving the entire shape. So we ju can juggle here, or we could juggle here, or here, and think about moving it in different ways. And each of those are static, but we could also think about juggling a three ball cascade and moving it this way fluidly over time. And this can go up, and it can go down, and it can go around, and it's... Uh, there's where the creative side comes in, where it's kind of, uh, where can you put the three ball cascade? And there's no reason to keep just this shape. We could uh, have one high and one low, and see what kind of shape comes from there. So now we're 
defining the shape by picking two points that we want it to originate from. And this actually can go into, I mean, everything I've done so far is in front of my body, but um, there's no reason why you have to stay here. You can put your arms around your back, you can put them under your leg, you can put them behind your head, you can like wrap them whatever you want. And we still, from wherever the two points are, there's still a cascade shape. So if there's a physical shape that interests you, having it be a goal to learn a cascade there can be a really cool thing. One silly little drill that I like to practice sometimes is Take it, trying to take the cascade, uh, leave it in its spot, ideally, um, and move my entire body around it. Um, and I've, I mean, found like the, the transitions are the hardest spot. So I've found like I want to get the shape here, and then bring my arm around, and then it's kind of just like whatever I can do behind my back, and then back. I'll show it this way. Ta-da, there's a silly little drill that I've come up with uh, using some of these principles. I guess it's not really a drill, it's more like a... It's a thing, okay? <laughs> so that's what I got for this video. Uh, to do a little recap, we talked about technical stuff uh, with high and low dwell time and high and low throws and mixing and matching those to find a whole bunch of different drills. We talked about a drill that I kind of recommend for everyone, which is just juggling and bringing those back. This one is really useful, especially when you're catching things that are really high. You want to cushion it and uh, bring it down. If if you're only if you're used to catching and like stopping and smacking it, I mean that's that's a style and, and can work and can be really cool because you have a shape, but it doesn't work for high numbers technical juggling. We also talked about on the creative side of things, just thinking about the shape of the pattern, moving it over time versus finding a static shape. And that's all I got for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and I hope you got something out of it. If you did, I would love, I would love to hear about it. Thanks so much. Have a good day.